Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and wow, what an action-packed week of space news. Starship, of course, completed its static fires with the SN4 Starship, and we're looking forwards to the potential 150-metre flight test. The SN5 and SN6 Starships continues construction as well, so loads going on again in Boca Chica, Texas. More news, talks, and footage related to the first crewed flight for SpaceX coming up in a few weeks with the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission, including a great talk here from Gwen Shotwell as well. This week also saw the first successful flight of the Chinese Long March 5B heavy lift rocket, then a few other great little snippets of news as well. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. There was certainly a lot of anticipation this week about the expected static fire test of SN4's Raptor engine. I'm happy to say though that it all went well. A wet dress rehearsal was conducted in the early hours of Monday morning. This saw the Starship full tank section filled with liquid oxygen and methane for the very first time. Special thanks as always to the amazing Mary aka Boca Chica Gal for being out all night giving so generously of her time not only be the boots on the ground for the team at NASA Space Flight swapping out batteries on the camera system and keeping the video stream going for all of us, but also providing important feedback from the test site as to whether the expected warning sirens were heard. This is the 10 minute warning to alert the local residents that a test firing is about to occur. On this occasion though, there was no warning. The testing concluded early Monday morning and not long after Elon confirmed here that the temperature of the liquid methane was too high. Fast forward to the early hours of Tuesday morning at the Boca Chica test facility and we saw the propellant loading activities continue much the same as the day before. A few hours into the test window, the flare stack was well alight, indicating methane burn-off preceding a possible engine firing, followed closely, of course, by a brief plume of flame from beneath the SN4 Starship, later confirmed as a pre-burner test. Unloading of the propellant then followed. As time passed, most likely giving time to evaluate the data they had just collected, SpaceX moved forward to recycle the systems on site and keep pressing forward to that moment we've all been longing to see. Mary excitedly reported hearing the overpressure event alert at 4.38am. There was a bunch of tension in the air as we edged closer to the 5am closure of the hazardous test window, with further flare stack eruptions followed by venting that then turned out to be the end of testing for that night. Now, Wednesday night's 9pm test window opening could not come fast enough. Was this going to be it? Was we going to be seeing more testing keeping us captivated right through the night? But no, it was truly amazing to see SpaceX come out swinging. It simply is the only way to best describe how they smashed this out. They were more than ready at this point. At 8.57pm, the sound suppression system activated under the SN4, followed by a three and a half second static firing of the Raptor engine. Just another incredible milestone achievement for the Starship prototype. Elon just rather calmly commented soon after that it was a pass, as if there was any doubt of that. What an amazing sight it was to see the Starship take its first breath and roar into life. SN4 then went on to do a second successful static fire. The main tank and the header tank this time were both put to the test during these events. The very next day saw the removal of Raptor number 18. This little beauty has done a fantastic job through the week and check out how clean it all still looks. The number of instruments included on this beast, presumably a heap of them for testing, just there hanging off everywhere. You can just imagine the amount of data they need to collect from these initial tests. This will all be simplified once they have the Raptor is performing well in future flight tests. Now just within the last day the pressure was back on with SpaceX conducting the start of some more pressure tests. Now we were all a little surprised that they had decided to do another, but seeing as the first pressure test was kind of a softball, as Elon Musk put it, it seemed like after all of these static fire tests there probably wasn't a lot more for the SN4 to prove, of course with the exception of that 150 meter flight. The hydraulic ram test structure was put back in place ready for the test. We were expecting this one to be pushed to the limits of what was needed for manned flights, but after several hours of waiting it seemed like perhaps there was only an ambient test or even an aborted test in the end, so we'll just need to wait and see what happens next. This certainly is a historic moment and for SpaceX the vision of sending humans to Mars and beyond is rapidly taking off. Well almost at least. Will SN4 still go on further and complete that 150 meter hop in the very near future as Elon previously stated? Perhaps even a second hop going a little bit higher? Let me know what you think is coming in the comments. I'd love to see what you think. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the previous hop with the Starhopper and would like to know a little more about what to expect here, I've got a video here talking 
talking about that in more detail. While you're here, of course, please do consider subscribing. There's loads more news coming with Crew Dragon and Starlink as well. I'd love to share all that with you. So with all of the attention well and truly focused on SN4 this week, what has been happening with the SN5? Work continued on the thrust dome segment and other ring segments continued to roll out. Back in April 25th, the nose cone section was stacked in the high bay. Now just recently, the nose cone was de-stacked and a peculiar looking dent was seen in the side. Exactly what has happened here is still unclear, as is of course when the stacking of the SN5 may be totally completed. Could we still be seeing the actuated fins being installed? Time will tell. Meanwhile though, the construction of the SN6 is also now underway, with ring segments churning out and moving around the site. Such a massive week for Starship development and also for Elon and the family as well, with the new baby Musk to add to the crew. From all of us to you, Elon and family, congratulations on the safe arrival of your new beautiful baby boy. Another interesting piece of information from Elon Musk just recently gave us some new insights in the potential future costs of mass to orbit, saying that SpaceX could potentially get it down to around $10 per kilogram. I mean, that's just stupidly crazy if that ever ends up being true. I mean, I couldn't send a kilogram from Australia here to the US for that. So yeah, he did also add that the cost of mass to Mars would be around 10 times that. Now just another reminder that the Crew Dragon Demo 2 launch is approaching very rapidly. This is going to be a massive highlight of the year, with astronauts launching from America once again for the first time since the Space Shuttle retired in 2011. This is a big deal, and it's amazing how many people I talk to outside of the space community that quite literally have no idea that this huge event is coming up. And also surprisingly have got no idea that astronauts have even been launching on the Soyuz from Russia all this time. Gwen Shotwell did a great talk here the other day that you may have missed around some of the history between SpaceX and NASA. There's a link to the tweet in the description if you want to watch that. SpaceX has been working with NASA very closely now for over 14 years and all that work has led right up to this upcoming launch event. This launch of the first astronauts by SpaceX in the Crew Dragon carried by the incredible Falcon 9 rocket. Now, although this is a huge event, we all have very high hopes that both Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley will have a very safe ride without any hiccups at all. Now although this milestone is only weeks away, there is still a massive amount of work to be done. Just thousands of SpaceX employees completely focused on this Crew Dragon Demo 2 flight. Currently the mission is still scheduled for May 27, so less than three weeks now, and we are all eagerly counting down the days. SpaceX of course already has a great number of existing missions under their belt to the International Space Station. They've had 21 flights to the station with a great deal of practice with those intercepts. The Crew Dragon Demo 1 mission, of course, was the first fully automated docking for SpaceX, and this is going to be normal practice from this point going forward. All others have been captured and berthed with the robotic arm on the space station with the recently retired Cargo Dragon 1 vehicle that will be replaced by a modified Dragon version 2, similar in design to what the crew will be flying on here. Now with all of this experience and with the amazing production quality of the Demo 1 mission last year, we are anticipating a spectacular mission with all of the incredible footage we've come to expect from SpaceX. Now SpaceX completed the last parachute drop test it needed to finalize just last Friday, checking off all of the requirements for the new Mark III parachute design. This is after a long series of tests as well, including the incredible in-flight abort test in January, which was done to ensure that all emergency abort features of the Crew Dragon vessel would work as intended. This is certainly not something that you see every day. As Gwen Shotwell said in this video, this was a very large scale system test to demonstrate the launch escape system, which is one of the primary differences between this Dragon version 2 and the retired Cargo Dragon. Incredible footage of the explosion here from SpaceX's new video released during the week as the booster began to flip over after engine shutdown. All of that of course was planned stuff, just amazing. So yes, this is going to be a massive mission and it's going to be the last major milestone needed to certify the Crew Dragon for future missions. In fact, there seems to be enough confidence in the vessel that the mission was actually already extended in duration to allow the astronauts to participate as Expedition 63 crew members. Currently it's unknown exactly how long this is anticipated to be, but it's going to be determined by the progress of the first operational crew mission, which is also incredibly exciting in itself. That mission is called the SpaceX Crew Dragon 1, or you may see it listed as USCV-1 or US Crew Vehicle 1. Either way, that mission is going to be prepared rapidly, and there are already a few little snippets here of some of the preparation work there. The primary crew for this one includes Michael Hopkins as Space Commander and Victor 
Dr. Glover as pilot, both from NASA, and then two mission specialists, Shannon Walker, also from NASA, and Soichi Noguchi from JAXA. So yes, this vehicle is already well underway, and that should be shipping out for tests in the next few months. Currently thinking this will launch around August or September sometime, but that will depend on the lead-up missions to that. A very exciting year ahead for the new Dragon vehicle, and of course we also have the cargo version of the vehicle with CRS-21 scheduled somewhere late in the year as well. That'll be a first for a cargo mission on that new Dragon. Now this week also saw the first successful flight of the Chinese Long March 5B heavy lift rocket as well as a prototype unmanned spacecraft with a crew capacity of seven. This separated from the rocket and entered its two day duration orbit as planned. There was also a test version of a cargo capsule released from the same rocket. China has plans of operating a new permanently manned space station which they hope to have completed by 2022 and that's named the Tiangong meaning Heavenly Palace. It's anticipated that assembly will begin sometime later this year with three modules eventually being delivered by this new heavy lift rocket. China also has plans to send astronauts to the moon for the first time in about a decade using a vessel similar to the prototype unmanned spacecraft launched in this week's mission. Now they've also had success in the past with other launches sending astronauts, satellites and even a rover to the dark side of the moon. So far that rover has travelled around 450 metres as it explores its surroundings gathering science along the way. A plan and mission to land a probe on Mars is also expected to lift off in July this year. Now, just quickly, a massive thank you to my amazing patrons here. You are quite literally turning this dream of mine of creating this content from a hobby into something much bigger. If you like what I do and you'd like to join our awesome patrons, head here to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the included roles in Discord. You can check out some exclusive patron-only content, and you can also have your name listed right here like these other amazing people. You are all quite literally changing my world here. Thank you very much for your support. Of course, not everyone can donate in this way, but regardless, you simply watching and interacting with these videos matters, and your subscriptions matter, and by watching and supporting this channel and discussing these topics with family and friends, you are helping to educate those around you. You're helping to drive the global passion to make all of these dreams of colonizing other worlds a reality. Now also today, a massive thank you to Spaceship Mania for the work here with this awesome Starship model. Now this is really cool, right? It's got movable aero surfaces, uh, it's got movable grid fins that you can pull out, uh, it can be unstacked and stacked on the booster. It is just a really great looking rocket. It's quite large as well as you can see. The thing I really love about this is that the YouTube channel is about 3D printed scale models of spaceships and rockets, both sci-fi and real world. Some of the models are designed by Randy here and can be downloaded absolutely free. Now if you don't own a 3D printer like myself, they can also offer physical models like this which can be ordered on the Etsy store. If you'd like to print out one of these little beauties yourself or pick up an already prepared version, go check that out. I've got links to both the YouTube channel and the Etsy store in the description. Thanks very much Randy, most appreciated mate, that's awesome. Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 Unity flew another successful mission last weekend and landed at Spaceport America in New Mexico. This flight provided an important milestone on the path to commercial service. It was the first free flight and glide test solo flight and a super important milestone to achieve in preparation for commercial service. The carrier aircraft released Unity at an altitude of 50,000 feet or just over 15 kilometers. On release, the Unity reached a glide speed around 340 meters per second. The flight allowed pilots day and CJ to test multiple maneuvers and tests on the airframe. The pilots also familiarize themselves of course with the airspace around the gateway to space and snap up all of that test data needed for future flights and pilot training, so great news there. Virgin Galactic received so little airtime because their flights don't reach orbit. I love these things though because this will allow almost anyone in the near future to take a test flight and see space and the Earth from a unique perspective. That is until Starship of course routinely starts hopping between continents maybe. So. Yes, the flights are short, quite similar in duration, I guess, to New Shepard by Blue Origin. In both cases, though, passengers will experience the joys of weightlessness and the sensations experienced by America's first astronauts. It's super exciting and it'll be a great experience.
So with that, a massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video last week talking about SpaceX's upcoming Demo 2 mission and some in-depth Starlink information. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.